What's going on? It has been a while, but we got the big loader behind us here and we got the forks for it. We're collecting some boulders today out of this pit here for our stone saw where we cut granite. Uh, in this pit, we're not allowed to blast, so the only thing we could get out of here is boulders. We'll kind of show you the process, bring them back to the saw, show you how the saw works too. It's pretty cool. Let's see where we can find some boulders. I haven't been up here in a while. There's a big boy over here to our right. Looks pretty fractured though. That's something you gotta watch for when you're picking your boulders. If there's a bunch of fractures in it and you cut it up to be some flagstone, it's uh, not gonna be that good. That is a super nice boulder right there, but it might be too big. thinking this rock's too big because I could kind of slide it across the ground. I don't have to lift it, but if I can't get the tip of the forks up onto the trailer, then I won't be able to get the boulder up onto the trailer. And I don't have another loader this size to unload these rocks. So I either got a, uh, so I'm probably gonna have to pull these off with the excavator and I don't want to damage the float. So I think we'll park this one on the side for now and we'll just grab some small ones for today. Well, we didn't get any big monster rocks in here, which I'm kind of disappointed about because those are always the fun rocks. You know, the challenge is always the fun part. But uh, yeah, we got a load on here. We'll chant it down back to the yard.
good to go. We've got about a 30 minute drive back to the shop where we unload. As you can see, there's already quite a bit of work that goes into getting these rocks to the stone saw and we haven't even started cutting them yet. All right, we're back at the shop here. We're in the 245. We're gonna grab a big log, stick it on the side of the trailer and try and pull these rocks off. snap the timbers if that log keeps rolling out. So I think I can pick the other two up. Cause I totally smashed those timbers. Definitely can't pick this one up. Oh, oh, oh. And now we are back in the pit here, picking up some nice big rocks out of the bank here. Or trying to find some nice ones anyway. We got a pile there. A few big ones. Oh, that is a stubborn one. Woohoo! I don't think it's even moved yet. And we have movement. Just a small little pebble. I'm not sure why I was so determined to get this rock out of here because it's not like I could load it on the truck anyway. So we'll have to come up here one day though, drill it and split it in half. We'll have two nice blocks. I guess we'll go load up some baby rocks. On the road again.
For our last load, we got one pretty big rock, just kind of sort of able to lift that one. One medium rock and one pretty small rock. Let's head back to the shop and I'll give you guys the rundown on actually cutting the granite. I don't know how much you guys are going to be able to hear with the saw going behind me in the building here, but uh, yeah, this is where all the magic happens in this building and lots of junk stone around here. Half of what you cut it's going to be trash when you're cutting flagstone, but when you get some nice pieces, you can do stuff like this. Make some nice tables. Like, that is a massive piece there. Have a look inside here. So it looks like right now we're cutting seven inch stair treads. Uh, obviously you can't just throw the stone in there and start cutting. You gotta prep the stone and then uh, yeah, set the saw up to cut it, which is pretty friggin' easy. But once you're done that, you end up with this, which looks pretty crappy, right? So you got a propane torch here and you actually flame the top of the stone and it chips it off and then you're left with a pretty nice, sorry battery died, but uh, then you're left with a pretty nice looking piece of stone, which I'll show you some of the types of stone we get around here. So it's all granite we get around here. Lots of it looks like this. Some of it's a little more colorful like that. Once in a while you get some kind of weird, maybe ugly looking pieces like that. Personally, I like the stuff with a lot of black and pink in it. I think the contrast is really cool. That's kind of a neat piece there. Eh? I don't know if that'd be too nice to walk on, but uh, then you can also get into some darker stone like this, which lots, lots of people like that. No pink whatsoever, just black and white. And uh, we have this stone here, almost has a greenish tinge to it. And uh, then this here, I think that's kind of ugly, pretty green again. And then also straight pink. So depending where you get your stone from, you'll run into all these different colors. Um, personally, my favorite is like this right here, which is from our pit that we're not allowed to blast in. If we we're allowed to blast in that, we'd have so much beautiful rock like that. Unfortunately, boulders, you know, they're not really endless. So, so we have to go to other quarries around as well. We don't actually have our own quarry. Um, have one in the works for like probably seven years. Most of the rock we're cutting is just for our own jobs. We don't really sell to the public too much. There's a couple guys we sell to, but uh, can hardly keep up cutting just to supply our own jobs. So, so this stone saw is fully automated. You just program it and it'll run all night long until, well, until the cable gets pinched, which happens often. You have water lubricating the diamond wire in there, but obviously you can't just use an endless supply of water. So it flows out flows into this massive septic tank. A little bit of the fine settlement there. Then into this massive septic tank where some more of the fine settlement here. And then into, I think this is a pump tank. I don't even remember anymore. But anyway, there's three tanks here. The water slowly settles and cleans itself and then just gets fully recycled back through the saw. And you have to clean out these tanks every so often. That's why it has uh, lids on here that we could easily lift off. Which, if you look over there, that is what comes out of here. Like I mentioned before, half of what you cut usually ends up as junk. Not really junk, but you know, you'd rather all pieces be this size, just massive sheets of granite. 
but realistically this is what you're ending up with a lot a lot of small pieces like this which we'll sell this to the public for pretty cheap uh, so yeah if you need some small flag we've got lots of it laying around here when we first got the stone saw here i was super interested in cutting stone and prepping it and you know making nice product but i can't really do my job and do this at the same time so i don't really pay attention to what happens over here anymore we've got guys that run it well some big steps over here 10 footers so i think this coloring is super cool and then when we go to sell the stone we turn on our scale here and we weigh it it's all two inches thick most of what we do is so two inches thick is 28 pounds per square foot so we just weigh it and uh yeah that tells us our square footage okay so the saw just finished its cut it's winding down and you can see it's lifting up it's a dirty place in here <laughs> so you see this piece kind of fell forward a bit lots of times it'll want to fall backwards and then pinch the wire and it doesn't have enough force to pull itself out it pulls up but it's got to pull pretty hard sometimes and there's a look at the wire the guys have been saying lately they've been getting about 4,000 square foot out of one wire which is really good um you're not always going to get that and i think when we started we we're probably getting around 1600 square feet per wire so the wires are obviously pretty expensive being you know diamond coated